Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my review of The Walking Dead Comics issue 158 and man, this one was like, this one was so good, like the content was incredible, we had a friggin ton of content, I'm absolutely loving the 16 panel grid because it feels just like, it feels like we're getting immensely more content each month, which is good for something that only comes out once per month. So I'm um, loving the pace we're moving at, which is way faster than I thought we'd be moving like the pacing for this was incredibly incredibly fast but uh, moving moving through it part by part just looking at the cover first the cover looks amazing I like this cover even more than I liked the last one with uh, Rick and Alpha this one with Negan and Michonne looks really nice and again Michonne barely showed up this chapter um, or this issue really so I it's a bit more artsy than literal, just like last or, or last month's. I almost said last week's. Just like last month's, a bit more artsy than literal, but I kind of like how they're doing that for the Whisperer War so far, and I think it looks really, really nice. Um, and then getting into the actual story, right at the beginning, we see Gabriel stumble down the ladder at the um, water tower and break his leg and get caught upside down. And then after all this time, and a character that I personally really like and I've talked about really liking before, Gabriel gets freaking like gutted upside down by Beta and is just eaten by walkers, eaten by the horde. And that scene was done so well over two pages. And Beta, being a fucking badass, says it's such a good line where he's like, you should have whispered. That was, I don't know, that was maybe my favorite one-liner in this um, issue. I just loved that so much. Friggin' you should have whispered and then just keeps walking. Ah, so good. Um, and then from there we move on to see, uh, I believe we see Vincent and he's going to the sanctuary to be like, Yo, we're going to war, we're at this battle, we need your men. And um, then, friggin' Tara, John, I found out the dude's name, John. Tara, John, and Sherry, and confirmation it was Sherry, they're like, um, or they're like, no, we're not, you can't have our men. Also, we're taking your horse. And bitches, man, bitch, these, the sanctuary, like, I thought we were, I thought we were all good, I thought we were cool. But they're like, nah, um, uh, Dwight and Rick are friends. Dwight and Rick are cool. Uh, once Dwight leaves, we're gone. So, ah, screw them. That was like, damn, damn guys, really? You're gonna, t you're gonna take my boy Vincent's horse, really? Um, make him walk all the way back. That was just wrong. Um, so yeah, I, I did not like that they did that. Screw them. Screw Sherry. So Rick gets to talk to Eugene for a minute after his speech, which presumably happened between issues since we know that um, he was supposed to give one at the end of last issue, and then we sort of saw it in the uh, 16 character page. Then um, coming into this one, it seems like when we see him, he just got finished t talking about a speech, runs into Eugene for a moment, but Eugene doesn't tell him about the uh, radio stuff yet. Um, and I didn't think he would yet, sadly. Uh, I, I hope he does soon, but I don't want that stuff to overshadow the Whisperer War, so um, I, I'm okay for them putting that off for a little bit longer. Um, and then we see... Uh, why, why am I stumbling trying to remember what all happened in this one? Uh, we do get a great conversation, I, rem I remember, between Dwight and Negan, where they're talking about like how Sherry is such a bitch, really. Like, seriously, fuck Sherry. Like, she did Dwight wrong. Like, it was her choice to go to Negan, and then she moved on to another dude anyway after all Dwight did for her. What a bitch. And now, she's part of a group that took Vincent's horse. What a bitch. Like, ugh. Sherry pissing me off here, this chapter. Or issue. Why do I always see chapter? Also, good guy William. I forgot this happened before the um, Dwight and Negan conversation. Good guy William did send Kingdom Forces to be part of the army. And I'm really, really liking William. I think he's a pretty cool character, is taking, sort of taking over after Ezekiel, at least for right now. And this Zachary dude, I completely hate, on the other hand. Like, it, I, I feel like he's literally an idiot. Literally the stupidest character. Like, the, the Whisperers are dangerous. You're talking about protecting yourself? The Whisperers are dangerous. That's why we're out fighting a war against them. Unprovoked. The Whisperers killed your leader. Why do you not want to 
send men to be part of the force to fight against them, go ahead and wipe them out, so that they don't come and once again randomly take and kill one of your people like they did. Like, it just, it's so stupid. He is such a stupid character. And it's different from where Sherry's just being a bitch, and I'm like, damn it. And it's like, okay, that's a good storyline point that this... I like the storyline point that not all the groups are getting together now, but as for this Zachary dude, like, his perspective and point on this is literally retarded. Like, there, there is no defending his position on this. Um, so yeah, that was really, really stupid. And actually, the Walker Horde and the Whispers, uh, back at the battle, they start to advance. They Some of the Whispers start to jump out of the Horde and stab at people. And, um, so shit starts really going down there. Negan ends up grabbing a uh, gun. Magna's group ends up coming in for the save. Uh, a little bit later, I think it may have been... I think there may have been a page before this, but we eventually do get to see the Kingdom forces coming in like a cavalry, cavalry on the horseback and whatever. And, um, ah, they were really cool. I love that the dude shouted for Ezekiel. That was great. Because, again, bringing it up, these guys without any sort of provocation, killed Ezekiel, killed the leader that had been taking care of the kingdom all this time, and it seems like some of them, like Zachary, seem to not care that these people came in and killed their leader who had been their leader for years. Also, for the entirety of the battle, this battle choreography is great. The whispers look really awesome. I love how they're like weaving in and out of the horde and just stabbing people. It's so cool. I love seeing our group, um, our army fighting against them as well, even though if, if a lot of the panels were unnamed characters and uh, they ended up dying, I still thought it was really, really cool to see. Um, I like when the one dude jumped on the uh, horse, killed the dude, and then stabbed the horse. That was really awesome. Um, and going on from there, we get into this uh, series of pages again, I think. Hold on. Looking at my notes to be sure. Oh no, before that we actually get to see the hilltop and Dante, Maggie, Brianna, um, Carl, and Lydia are just chilling there. Carl's actually put himself on guard duty, taken off from uh, working for Earl just to uh, guard for a little bit. And you know Lydia brings up, they have the numbers that if they attack here, if you see them, it'll matter that you see them because we're screwed. And that makes me think again, is that foreshadowing of an attack? Could they possibly have more people that aren't at the main battle that could attack the hilltop? Because um, from the way they talk, it it just seems foreshadowy. It seems like maybe they're, they could potentially be going that route. Um, and then jumping back and forth to a bunch of different stuff that I've written down that we jumped for, like we were only at for like a quarter of a page was like um, Eugene stopping by the um, ammo production plant or whatever and uh, saying we gotta help I'm here to help let's uh, get this done to assist the war effort um, we also get to see sorry uh, Aaron trying to walk which was really cool getting to see because I like seeing Aaron he's one of maybe not my favorite favorite characters but I really enjoy the character we get to see Siddick who is a new character that I really enjoy talking to Pete about maybe um, the Oceanside supplying some men but uh, no luck there Oceanside will not supply anybody and uh, he even tells Siddick you know um, after all this goes down why don't you uh, return to help us out so I'm really curious to know more about Siddick's backstory and in the um, letter hacks we were kind of um, hinted at getting to learn more about Siddick later so I want to because I want to know what made him leave Oceanside to come and be at Alexandria and just, I don't know, the character really, really interests me. I really like Siddick. Um, and then after that, another thing we didn't stick at for a full page was, um, oh yeah, we get to see John, Sherry, and Tara again playing cards, and we get to see Rick and Andrea having lunch up by the uh, wall at Alexandria. And that's about it for all the jumping around that we did. Then we finally get to see um, Michonne and Jesus showing up at the battle, and there's this really awesome... Before that, we get a little bit of death flagging there for Jesus. Um, hope he doesn't die. I feel like it was just sort of um, screwing around fan service because like what Michonne said with him talking about Aaron, she's like, you're going to make a lot of people happy. I feel like that was kind of a shout out to fans and stuff, kind of not totally breaking the fourth wall, but just sort of fan service shout out there. 
we get to see this full page panel of them coming up to the battle and it looks really really nice if the perspective makes it a little bit hard to judge certain things it still looked really nice jesus rushes in and does some some badass shit flipping off the horse cutting a bunch of people up and it looks really unrealistic but i think it was still really really good because I feel like it's a comic book sometimes. I like when it stays realistic, but sometimes you can stretch that realism a little bit. And um, I really thought it was funny, and I thought it was awesome too. Now we get to a hell of a good ending. We see Beta weaving in and out of the um, walker horde and just mowing through soldiers, just stabbing a ton of different dudes. Just, just ah, I love this sequence so much. Just because it showed how badass he was and made him seem like such a threat where he would just like duck into the horde, jump out and stab a dude, duck in, jump out and stab a dude, and Beta was just like taking people down. And then he targets Dwight, goes after Dwight, and then Negan clubs him over the back of the head with the rifle. And he's like, you know, um, stand up, get up off the ground so I can put you back in it and all that. And it was a really good ending. But the thing is, this pacing's hella fast. If we're getting Beta versus Negan already, this is hella fast. Um, and the thing is, I feel like it was really, really fast, unexpectedly so, but not rushed whatsoever. Nothing felt rushed. It just seemed like we got a ton of content, which is good. I actually liked that it was paced this fast because of the amount of content that was in it. Um, I love jumping around and seeing all these different characters in all these different locations. Like, as far as one issue goes, we got everything I could have asked for and more. The art here is some of my favorite art that I've read in The Walking Dead. Like, the battle and the choreography of it looked really amazing. Um, I'm really liking William as a new character that we're getting introduced to um, over the past few issues. And uh, R.I.P. Gabriel, I really like the character, and I thought it was a really cool death. A lot of people are complaining because it was, like, too subdued or low-key, or like, man, how's he going to die like that in, like, the first page? But after he's been around for so long, but I like that. It just, it felt real. It felt sad that he got that potential taken away. Like, that's what a death should feel like. I, I thought it was done really well. Um, and it not being a huge deal, I don't know. I think that made it even better for me the way it went down. I thought it was a really good death. Um, and yeah, fuck Sherry. <laughs> Sherry's being a bitch. Um, but yeah, other than that, I really loved this. I loved everything about this. It was one of the better issues I've read, but not completely, completely perfect or anything. So, uh, for as much as I like this, I'm giving it... 9.25 um, 9.25 stolen horses out of 10. I really could have thought of something more creative than that, I guess. 9.5 or 9.25 horseback backflips out of 10. That would have been funny. Um, or better, at least. More creative. I'm getting way worse at those. But either way, like if you guys did like this video and comment down there, tell me what you thought of this issue and what you thought of my thoughts on it. Subscribe for more The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, also Walking Dead TV show. Um, so yeah, I do all of that, plus a ton of other stuff if you're interested. And um, follow on Twitter if you want as well. I'll try to keep you updated there on stuff for the channel. And that is it. I'll see you all um, first Wednesday of next month, I guess, when I do the next live reaction and review. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.